Hello, Mr. President. Hey, Mark. How are you? Uh, it's about an eight today. Okay. Mr. President, I spent the morning with... Nine. Okay, I spent the morning with some Mainers on the unemployment line, and they just feel an awful sense of frustration and nothing is being done. What can you tell them? Tell them that uh, we're in tough economic times, uh, that as far as what the president can do about it, uh, we're going to have a State of the Union message that's laced with strong proposals to get this country back to work. Uh, tell them that I think most people are beginning to get a little more optimistic about the overall economy to come out of a recession that has hurt a lot of people, uh, a sluggish economy in some areas that's hurt a lot of people, and uh, say, don't give up. You've got your, we're, we'll try to do what's right on, uh, on uh, helping you through the various government programs, but the answer is to create new jobs, and that's what I'm going to try to uh, encourage Congress to join me in doing at the State of the Union message. Mr. President, these people who are hurting in New Hampshire and Maine, though, they have to pay their groceries uh, tonight. They have to pay their rent. They don't want to wait for a speech. If you, if you have a plan to help, they want it now. It'll be out there. And uh, I've, actually, the irony is, Mark, uh, I've had a plan and have talked about it for three years. But now I think the time has come to lay aside the partisan politics and get it done. Uh, as I said yesterday, look, I'm perfectly prepared to accept my share of the blame. And I'd like to see Congress, the leaders of the United States Congress, get up and accept their share because the American people are blaming them more than they do the President of the United States. And uh, I need the cooperation now of this Congress to help those people that are in those unemployment lines. That's my answer. You spent the day in New Hampshire yesterday. What did you learn there? Uh, learned, uh, had re it wasn't so much new learning. It was reinforcement of something I already knew, and that is that people are hurting. There's still a kind of an underlying innate optimism amongst people that we can do this. We're Americans. We're from New Hampshire. We can, we can get things going, but we need help. I didn't find that it was, uh, uh, you know, totally down. Uh, the economy's hurting. People are worried. Their confidence isn't there. But I also was pleased to see that they're saying, hey, uh, give us a shot and we can make it, that I, kind of thing. I was with you in New Hampshire and you said that uh, New Hampshire has seen its share of rain, but a rainbow is coming. When can they expect that rainbow? I, You know, I'm a little gun shy on predicting uh, because I think the 49 of the 50 blue chip econ economists a year ago were predicting uh, economic growth by now and it hasn't happened. Uh, I'd, I could refer you to what the experts are saying uh, end of the second quarter of this year, of, you know, a more more vigorous growth, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to stop short of giving a timing. Some of it will depend on the the way in which the Congress works with me now on on getting these incentives going. Although no single incentive is going to solve the economic problems. In 1988, uh, millions of Americans uh, voted for you over your opponent because you said no new taxes, and he didn't. Why should those voters stay with you in '92? Well, because I think they know that when you go to govern. And when your choice is shutting down the government, turning off Social Security checks, resisting sending out checks that might have something to do with supplying your army that's halfway around the world, that sometimes you have to compromise. And I didn't want to do that, just as Ronald Reagan, a uh, strong anti-tax president that he was, had to raise taxes in 82. I didn't want to do it in 19, uh, 1990. But uh, there was one good thing that came out of that, only one and that is to get constraints on government spending. And we capped discretionary spending, and that was positive. So I found that once in a while, a great while, if you don't control the Congress, you have to make a compromise. The option, the alternative being, do you shut down the government? Do you say to the Social Security recipients, you're not gonna get your check this month? And I wasn't prepared to do that, especially when you layered on the ingredient of moving forces to fight for uh, against aggression halfway around the world. Mr. President, though, weren't, won't the, the tax's purpose was to help with the deficit, and isn't the deficit still a big problem? So raising taxes really didn't help with the deficit, did it? Well, the deficit is still a big problem for reasons I think we all understand. The fall of the savings and loans, the need to protect the depositors in these financial institutions, that's a major part of a, uh, you know, you might say a one-time cost that comes over from the excesses of, uh, of some of the lending practices. But to uh, put it this way, it would be one whale of a lot worse if these caps on the discretionary spending weren't in place. Uh, things like entitlements uh, are not capped, as you probably know. 
people's entitlements and cost of living increases. That goes on and on. Interest on the debt, on and on. But on these programs where, where a president or a Congress can control them, there are caps on that kind of spending. And they will stay there as far as I'm concerned. All right. Mr. President, quickly, on the Persian Gulf a year later, are you satisfied? Yes, we achieved every single objective. I just had lunch with Colin Powell, Secretary Cheney, and the rest of the All Joint right. Chiefs. All right, Mr. President. Uh, and we achieved our international objectives. Uh, we taught Saddam Hussein a lesson. We did what we set out to do. We did it under the rubric of international law, and it was a glorious victory for the United States, and no historic revisionists are going to be able to take it away from these young men and women that fought so well. Right. Mr. President, thank you for joining us. Not at all.